Okay, so in this video, we will discuss a second type of discontinuity, namely a jump discontinuity. And the name gives it away. A function will have at a given value of x a jump discontinuity if there is a jump in the function. Now, let's consider two examples and see what it takes in terms of the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit to imply a jump in the function. So here's our first example. We'll take a piecewise function. So let's take f of x to be x squared minus 3 if x is strictly less than 1. And let's take f of x to be root of x if x is equal to or greater than 1. Now I claim that this function has a jump discontinuity at x equals 1. If you look at both functions, x squared minus 3 is a polynomial, so it is continuous everywhere, so there's no problem here. Because we're using root of x for values of x larger than 1, then root of x is also continuous. So both functions individually on their respective domains are continuous. But what's interesting here, or at least what we should be wary of is that we are piecing two different functions around one. So whenever you piece two functions, <coughs> sorry, whenever you piece two different functions at a given value of x, you always have to consider this point as a possible point of discontinuity. So let's consider our three quantities, and here we will have to look at the limit from the left and from the right as on the left of one, we use this polynomial. On the right of one, we use this square root function. And so here it is essential to look at the limit from the left and from the right. So we will consider, as we've just said, the value of 1. So first, what's f of 1? Well, when x is 1, we use a square root function. And so f of 1 is the root of 1 which is simply 1. So, so far, so good. The function is defined at 1. Let's look at the limit as x approaches 1 of our function. And again, here we cannot consider the limit directly, as this is a two-sided limit. But if x is less than 1, f of x is this polynomial. If x is bigger than 1, f of x is root of x. Which one do we choose? Well, we can't choose unless we specify if we're coming from the left or from the right. So we'll start with the limit from the left, and now we can specify. Because coming in from the left implies that x is less than 1, in which case f of x is this polynomial. So the limit now is trivial. As x approaches 1, 1 squared approaches 1, minus 3 gives us negative 2. Let's look at the limit as we are approaching 1 now from the right-hand side. If we are approaching 1 from the right, then x is slightly larger than 1. And if x is larger than 1, f of x is the root of x. And of course, as x approaches 1, root of x approaches the root of 1, which is also 1. So here, everything exists. The function is defined at x0, which is 1. The limit from the left is defined and equals negative 2. The limit from the right is defined and equals 1. What's interesting here is if you remember to have continuity, all of these three quantities must exist, which here they do, but they must also all be equal. And if you notice, the limit from the left is different than the limit from the right. And let's see why, well, first, this does imply this continuity as there are all three quantities are not equal. And let's see why this means a jump discontinuity, quite simply from the graph of the function. Let me make a small graph here, as both functions are quite simple to graph. The point where we're piecing the two functions is 1. So here's 1. Now, at 1, f of 1 is 1.
and above 1 it's just the square root of x functions. So root of x would look like this, so it just keeps going like this. So that's our graph to the right and at 1. Now when x is less than 1, so to the left of 1, we graph the quadratic x squared minus 3. But x squared would look like this, but we're translating the function down by 3 units. So at 0 it would be negative 3. And we just draw x squared here. And as we have seen, as we are approaching 1 from the left, y, our function f, is approaching negative 2. And now we have our quadratic x squared minus 3. And this is the graph of our function. f of 1 is 1. As x approaches 1 from the right, y approaches 1, which we can see is true of our graph. And as x approaches 1 from the left, our function f or y values are approaching negative 2. And we can see as x is approaching 1 from the left, the y values are getting closer and closer to negative 2. But never reaching negative 2, as when x is 1, the function is equal to 1. And so you can see, there clearly is a jump in the function. And so when the limit from the left exists, and the limit from the right exists, but they're different, that's what happens. You get a jump in the function. And that's why we have a so-called here jump discontinuity, the circ conclusion. So every time that the two limits from the left and from the right exist but are different, you will have a jump in the function, therefore a jump discontinuity. Let's consider one other example where the function initially is not given as a piecewise function because it may feel like we're cheating here a little bit. To do so, we'll use the absolute value function. So here's our second example. We'll take f of x to be x minus 2 over the absolute value of x minus 2. Now, x minus 2 is defined everywhere. Same goes for the absolute value of x minus 2. But there's a division. And so we cannot divide by 0, which is when x equals 2. So here we have to check the point x0 being 2. This is our only possible discontinuity. So let's see. First, what is f of x0, which is f of 2? Well, you'll have 0 over the absolute value of 0, which is also 0. So f of 2 is 0 over 0, which is undefined. So right away, x0 is a point of discontinuity of this function, as the function is not defined at this point. But let's see that it is a jump discontinuity. So we take the limit, and every time we have an absolute value, we have to consider a way to drop it, and this will be done by considering the limit from the left and the limit from the right. Let's look at the limit from the left. We know we have a 0 over 0 case. And again, to figure out how to replace the absolute value by something else, let's look at the real line for a second. We are approaching the point 2, but we are approaching 2 from the left, so x is to the left of 2, therefore smaller than 2. We look at x minus 2, so subtract 2 from both sides, and so x minus 2 is less than 2 minus 2, which is 0, and so x minus 2 is negative. Well, the absolute value function makes things positive. So if x minus 2 is negative, as it is in this case, to make it positive, we simply have to negate it, and it becomes positive. 
But now we have a common factor of x minus 2 on top and on the bottom. As x approaches 2, x is close to, but not exactly 2. And so this is not exactly 0, so we can cancel. And we are left now with a trivial limit. The limit as x approaches 2 from the left of negative 1, which is of course always negative 1. So, so far, the limit from the left does exist and equals negative 1. What about, of course, the limit from the right? Once again, we have a 0 over 0 case. Let's draw the real line. Since we are approaching 2 from the right, x is slightly larger than 2. We are interested in the sine of x minus 2. So subtract 2 from both sides, and you'll get 0 is less than x minus 2. Therefore, x minus 2 is already positive. So we can drop the absolute value. Again, we'll have a trivial limit as x is approaching 2, x is not 2. x minus 2 is therefore non-zero, so we can cancel top and bottom. And we're left with quite simply 1. And as x approaches 2 from the right, 1 is always 1. And the limit from the right is therefore 1. So if you look, the function is undefined, so there's no value there. Already, this implies this continuity. As the limit from the left and the limit from the right both exist but are different, we will have a jump in our function. So, x0 being 2 is also a jump discontinuity. And let's look at this graph, well, this graph, this function graphically, and see that again we have a very clear jump in the function. Because when x is very close to 2 from the left, the function is very close to negative 1. But when x is very close to 2 from the right, the function is very close to positive 1. The point of interest, it being x equals 2, At 2, there is no y value, right? f of 2 is undefined, no y value here. And look at our simplification. When x is to the left of 2, the function simplifies to negative 1. So it's the constant function, y equals negative 1, to the left of 2. So the function will look like this. But at 2, we have no value. There's a hole here. And look at the limit from the right. When x is slightly bigger than 2, the function simplifies to 1. And it's always 1. It's the constant function. Once again, though, there is no value at 2. And so this function actually is what's called a step function. Below 2, it's always negative 1. At 2, there's no value. And to the right of 2, it's always 1. And this is just, again, visualizing what the limits were already telling us as both limits from the left and from the right exist, but are different, there must be a jump in the function. And so, x being 2 is a jump discontinuity. And that's it. So let's summarize what it takes to have a jump discontinuity. As we've seen, we don't care where the value of the function is at the point, right? In the previous problem, the function was defined at 1, the value was 1, here, the function is undefined. The value could be, if you think of it, for f of 2, it could be negative 1, it could be 1, it could be 5, it could be negative 3. No matter what the value of the function at 2 is, there will always be a jump in the function. So the value of the function at the point of this continuity is irrelevant. To have a jump discontinuity, all it takes is the limit from the left and from the right to exist and be different. And that is our conclusion. So if the limit of f as x approaches x0 and the limit, of course, from the left and the limit of the function f as x approaches x0 from the right and I'll 
on the brace list if both of these exist and are finite but they're not equal then there is a jump in the function and so the conclusion is that x0 is a jump discontinuity. And that's it.